Hello everyone and welcome to From the Heart Friday, session 35, with me, Jessica Brigton of Just B Creative Cardiology. Thank you so much for joining me today and be sure to share the love by leaving me some comments, subscribing, um, hitting that like button and the thumbs up, all of that good stuff, I really appreciate it. Today I am excited to share some fun projects from my tropical creative escape that I held last weekend. So now that that's over and the attendees have uh, experienced it and received their gifts, I'm now able to share some of those projects with you. So let me just first show you here. I really kind of go all out with that. So I have this cute beach bag that I put all of their supplies in. I made little luggage tags using the Tropical Oasis Memories and More cards. And then inside there I had a package of the Tropical Oasis 12 by 12 designer series paper. I did a whole cardstock assortment, 24 sheets of coordinating cardstock to match. And they had a little pineapple treat bag here that held some Memories and More cards. I had a little treat bag of accessories. And isn't that cute? I found these little Flamingo paper clips. Um, and this held their ribbon and their, their little trinkets and all the goodies that they would need for their projects. And then I also had these cute little beach bag totes, uh, the little treat bags that I showed you guys last week. And so I'm gonna show you how I made these today, as well as this other fun little project, the little tropical shirt card to match. So how cute is that? here in New York, it's snowy day. Hi, Rachel. So I've got my tropical shirt. I've got the Hawaiian theme vibe in there. And I'm wishing I were in Hawaii and not here where it's cold and snowy. And as I said earlier, I've got flat hair. I've got mega hat hair going on today. But um, it is beautiful, the sun is shining. It's just cold. All right, so I'm hoping to heat things up in here with some fun projects for you. And I've got, these had, um, these are the little um, cello bags that are part of the um, the animal, party animal suite that's um, the Bonanza animals that um, are in the spring, or in the mini catalog there. And uh, so I put in there, I found these cute um, fruit bites, they're little tropical fruits. I've got some mamba, the fruit chews in there and um, tied it up with some of the cute little twine that was from the celebration. Hey mom, hey Pam, hey Doris. Yeah, so and then I uh, tied him off a little treat that said welcome friend. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna put this little sampler of products away there and show you how I made those. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this around, get started. And uh, we'll, we'll get right to it here. All right, bear with me as I flip. Okay, I think you can see everything in here. All right, so you can see I've got my February host code up there. V-U-G-U-B-G-Z-M. It's in the comments up there, so if you're missing that, let me see if I can turn some. That didn't really help as far as some extra lighting. There we go, that brightens it up just a touch. All right, and turn out to be too crooked for you. Hey, Janelle. Yeah, so you can see I've got my little treat bag here and my little tropical shirt, both super cute, really fun projects. And um, to go ahead and get started here, we're going to start with the little rattan that looks the little treat bag here. So for that, let me just prop that up. Okay, so for this project, you are going to need the framelits from the Dressed to Impress product suite. So these are the all dressed up framelits in here. Okay, so it's a, it's a big set, but this die in particular is the one that cuts out the little bag. So it doesn't always have to be a purse. In this case, it could be a fun beach tote. So I'm pulling that aside, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. And then for the little tag here, 
We are using the Time for Tags stamp set. You may have overlooked this. This is actually a Stampin' Rewards set from the annual catalog. It's back here on page 206. And I loved it because it has this little pineapple, the welcome friend. Um, so in order to get this stamp set, you sorry about that a phone call, spammer calling in. Um, so yes, yeah, so you need a $150 order and then you can use your Stampin' Rewards um, in order to get this free at the $12.50 value there. Okay, so anybody can get that. You don't actually have to have a party, um, but you do need to have an order totaling $150. Okay, so then with this, we have a matching punch. This is the Timeless Tag Punch. And we'll be using some soft suede ink and a couple of the blends. I've got the Mango Melody, because I like that bright kind of orangey yellow color. And then I've got my Old Olive, trusty Old Olive. It's my most used green out of any of them. Okay, so the cool thing about this framelit is that you can actually you need to cut two of these um, but you can get both both pieces that you need the front and the back of the bag out of one sheet of the eight and a half by eleven cardstock so what I'm going to do is trim it here on the shorts this is the eight and a half inch side I'm going to trim it at five and a half inches um, so that way it will actually fit through my my big shot through my die cut machine so I'm gonna pull this, slide those over, okay. Pull this in here so you guys can see what I'm doing. So at the five and a half inch mark there, we're just gonna go ahead and cut that. So you end up with a, an extra little piece that you can use for, for other things. We know how we love our scraps. Okay, so with this, so I just have my, um, because this is a, a, a framelit thin die. So I've got my uh, base with my thin die adapter. If you have the old style Sizzix platform, then it'd be the base with one with um, yeah with one tab. And then we have our plate. Okay, so I'm gonna set this on here. We'll have to run this through twice. Remember to put it um, cut side down. But you can see how it fits on there, and we'll be able to get two pieces. So we're gonna run this through first. I'll put my other plate on top, sandwich it through. And the cool thing is it cuts and embosses all at the same time here. So when I pull that out, oh, there we go. Okay, so it's cool because it's got the little stitching on there. Hey, Luann, and it has your score lines. So everything is is right there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the second one. All right, so I do love that you can get, you can get both pieces out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. Um, so that is pretty good for your budgeting use of supplies. Okay, then I'm gonna move these. All right, so we've got two pieces and you can see there's not, there's not a whole lot of waste, not much left over. Okay, so I've got both of these. Now I can set that framelit aside. Now the next thing we need to do is emboss these. And yes, here is the Coastal Weave 3D embossing folder. So this is from the Tropical Oasis Suite. It's right here in the middle. It's a little easy to overlook. This is page 39 of the mini catalog. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and Take this out of the wrapper here. And it's cool, you can kind of see there, it's got that, oops, that zigzaggy design on here with the soft suede cardstock. I thought it really gave it that cool rattan look. All right, and the cool thing is it has um, the little lines on these folders now, um, so you know which side is the right side up. Okay, so when you do this, we wanna make sure that we run each of them through in the same direction so that our zigzags uh, will match up. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this in uh, like this first. And I want as much of the die, or as much of this die cut um, embossed as possible. So you do need to wiggle it around 
in there. Can you see I've got it right up to the corner? And so the only part that's not gonna be embossed is this little tiny strip, which is actually the bottom of the bag. So you can kind of see down here, I do have that little piece, um, but really nobody's, nobody's gonna notice that too bad. So because this is the 3D embossing folder, any of these folders now, um, you need your base, just your regular base, no tabs. Um, you need your embossing folder here. And then you need the blue adapter plate for the embossing folders. Um, I believe they did picture this in the, in the catalog now. Yes, so the 3D plate, if you're wondering where it is, you can find it online or in your mini catalog, it's on page 11 um, and it's just $10 there. Hi, Diana, how are you? Okay, so I've got, like I said, my base, my embossing folder here, and then the blue um, embossing adapter plate. And I'm gonna run that through on my first piece. Okay, so when I take that out, how cool is that? Super fun, right? You can see the texture on there. And you could use either side. I like, I like it so that the weave is pointing out. Is it that more of that rattan look? Okay, so you're gonna do the same thing with your second piece. Again, line it right up there, tight in the folder. Okay, and then give it a little wiggle. So the only part that's not embossed, again, is just that little strip. Okay, and you'll also need to have some of the tear and tape, or perhaps the, you have the red line tape. I like the tear and tape because it doesn't, um, it doesn't give us that static cling all over the place. Okay, so here we go. This is the tear and tape adhesive, and I do love love this. And I love it because you can tear it, but I am gonna pull out my my trusty snips there too, just in case. So what we're going to do? So we have the two pieces here and essentially these are going to match up like this and then we'll fold them in so i'm going to go ahead and put my tear and tape on this little edge so you can see there is a score line there um, if you want you can go ahead and kind of score that first and fold in your your little pieces for the bottom again they do have score lines already on them you can just kind of burnish these i'm not worrying about the sides because i actually want my bag to point out i don't want it to go in like a regular toe i want it to point out because i think that's that's more beachy when you've got it full of your let's say your beach towels and and your snacks and sunscreen and all that fun stuff that you do in your in your beach bag okay so i'm going to peel that Right off, so you wanna just burnish it a little bit, whether it's with your finger or your uh, with your bone folder, because you want the adhesive to stick, but you also wanna be able to pull off this little wax paper layer. Can you guys see that? Okay, so, oh, Doris put both pieces in the embossing folder. Yep, that's a good, that would give you a much, that would give you a deeper impression. The only thing with that is um, I didn't want it to cut through, um, I wanted to make sure that my bag, the fold lines actually stayed intact there. So you're gonna go ahead and line, line these pieces up together there. Okay, so our score lines all across match. So you can kind of see how this is starting to, to come together already. Okay, so I'm going to put Again, adhesive on, I'm gonna flip it. So you see what I had the adhesive? I put it on the outside edge of this one as well. Okay, go ahead and burnish that with your finger, with your bone folder. Okay, and then the other thing I'm going to do while I'm at it is put a little bit on the, the bottom tabs. Okay. And then on just one of these pieces, 
um, that's gonna be folded inside, we're gonna put two pieces of the strip here. We want this to stay together. So I'm gonna put one right up against the score line here and one there on the outside. Okay, so that's it for our sticky strip there. And then this is a sticky strip intensive project. Um, I used the braided burlap trim um, along the front and it is a little bit easier actually if you go ahead and put your sticky strip do all of this before you get it so folded together that that you can't really manipulate it too much so i've got it going right up right to the edge okay so we're going to do this on both the front can you guys see that in the in the view and then yep just tear it right off there and then we're also going to do it on the back we want straps our handles for the bag to be to be on both the front and the back okay so that's what gives it something to hold on to hey Mary Beth how are you doing yes okay so we're gonna put the adhesive on the front here this is the what we'll need for the straps for our little beach tote here this reminds me I had a, um, a really cute beach tote it was a cork with a metallic through it and it was kind of in this color it was it was shaped about like that it was a really big tote though so it was a little too big but okay and the reason I've done this I've just kind of scored or burnished each of those to make sure that adhesive sticks all right so now we're gonna take our braided burlap trim and actually for each of these um, pieces for your straps there for the front and the back you're going to need, I measured this out, uh, you need 13 and a half inches of ribbon for each piece. So for each project, for each tote, you're gonna need 27 and a half inches. All right, so we're gonna peel off this. And I did that so that the handles, um, so you can see the handles have of our good length. They're long, I mean, because truly if this were real person size, then um, <laughs> you would have them so you could throw it over your shoulder. So you want your handles just a little bit longer, but, but not too long. Okay, so I'm peeling, just removing this, the wax paper layer from the trim. And it's been so dry here. Man, my fingernails are cracking and I don't really have many fingernails right here. Not too much. Okay, so I've got these little pieces of sticky strip. Put this on here, and I think it's kind of cute. I did um, fray the edges a little bit of that ribbon, and you're just gonna bring it right around again. Kind of fray your edges, bring it right down here, and it line it right up against that stitch line. That um, tear and tape here is about a quarter of an inch wide, and that's perfect for the handles here. Okay, so we're going to do both sides of this. Oops. Okay, I'm going to peel off the waxy paper. All right, and then we'll take our second piece. Our second, so again, these are 13 and a half inch strips, which I don't have my, um, actually, Okay, so let me pull out. I've got a piece of the um, Stampin' Up! grid paper here, so I don't want to stick that to my grid paper. Okay, so if you're in the U.S., then you're, you see down here at the bottom? All right, so we've got 13 and a half inches there. But if I flip it over, there's metric on the other side. So for our metric side, right down here along the bottom, this is going to be, looks like you need 34 centimeters there, okay? So that is your length per bag strap is um, 34 in the metric. Okay, so now let me I reattach this. Okay. 
<laughs> the nice thing is if you pre-measure these and not just um, eyeball them, then all of your bags, your handles will be perfectly even. Okay, so we're looking at this upside, upside down a little bit. This, now you can see the, do I have a long tool? Oh, the pokey tool. Yes, Doris is referring to this. Yes, I didn't even think about that. I have it right here. Yep, thank you, Doris. <laughs> Use the tools that you have. It makes things much easier. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna peel off. Oh. See, I'm just so used to doing things a certain way. So Doris mentioned, yes, use your little uh, multi-purpose tool, peel that right back, save your fingernails. Okay, save this right here so that I don't keep forgetting it. And just fold this in. All right, and then that should, I know I'm doing this upside down, I'll keep flipping it around on you guys. Okay, so that's gonna match right up. You can go ahead and squeeze it, match up your lines, get them perfectly even. Okay, so now, now you can see our, our tote taking place. We've got the adhesive, and you can't even really tell where they were pulled together because our seams are nice and even. Okay, so now we're going to, again, use our little pokey tool. Okay, I'm going to use each side here. Oops, I don't want to peel it all the way off. Just the little piece. There we go. All right, so we're going to fold those in. Okay. Fold them in right. They're going to go underneath the piece with the adhesive on it. Okay. So we can see you're going to fold that right, right square. Give it a press. Okay. And then this one too, the second one's a little bit easier. All right, so just match it right up with that line. Okay, use our multi-purpose pokey tool. This is the spatula end. And just get that underneath there. Try not to peel your adhesive up with it. Come on. All right, there we go. And then this will collapse right over and then we have a nice reinforced bottom on our bag there. Okay, so you can always like go in and, and just use your bone folder to make sure everything is nice and smooth in there right down in the, in the little corners. Okay, so that is our bag base. So that's pretty much all together. Now we wanna make the cute little, um, cute little decorative tag for it. So again, for that we'll need our Time for Tags stamp set. And I have pulled out just the welcome friend, the little pineapple here, and a scrap piece of some Whisper White. Set my bags up out of the way here. And I'm going to stamp this um, horizontally because I want my punch to be able to slide up in there and cut that out. So I'm gonna stamp that in soft suede ink. Get that out of the way. Okay, perfect. Go ahead and close that up. Now I do like to color my stamps um, before I die cut them or punch them out. So with this, I've got a Mango Melody. This is one of our new colors. Uh, during the color renovation last year. So it's kind of a cross between an orange and a, and a yellow. I like that. So again, I'm gonna just highlight. I like to go through and do the darker pieces first. And then I'll go in with my light. Yep, light mango melody with the painty part. And just color that all around. Okay, so that way you've got a little bit of uh, definition. Again, go in with my old olive with the bold tip. I'm gonna do these. Okay. 
And then go with the painty tip for the light. And just color that in. Okay. And then we will pop this out. There we go, line it up, pop it out. Okay, then we do need, so I have it handy, my, um, you do need something to poke the holes, so you could use your, do you know the multi-purpose tool? Um, swaps out there and does have a, a pointy tip, so you could use that with your paper piercer and just pierce a hole or you could use your 1 16th hole punch or or if you have the new um Stampin up has a new punch in the spring catalog here it looks very similar but it's not quite the same this is the Label me fancy punch here. And it's actually got a little hole punch on the side. This is on page 42 of that catalog. So in which case, I could just slide, slide this in where you want it. And just pop, pop it right up. That works pretty good. But like I said, if you don't have that, you could use your paper piercer and your, um, piercing mat and those would work too okay so I've got that I'm going to grab some linen thread here keep mine in a little bag because um, if yours is anything like mine I tend to make a little little rat's nest out of it <laughs> all right so for this you want enough to be able to work it with your fingers so I think that's about six inches or so I'm gonna just whoops get my snips there and I'm going to put both ends together you do a little sewing trick and and kind of wet those with your lips to poke them through the hole okay so I just then tied it in a knot okay make sure you're not going all the way through so I tied a little knot there and when it comes to my bag, I'm going to just take this around and just slip that, slip that knotted piece through the loop, okay? And then you can adjust it and move it and tighten it as you need it. But it does, it's long enough there, you could um, tuck this right behind and then nobody would even know and that allows your little bag charm to to dangle a little bit there if you don't like that you could put a couple of dimensionals and um, just stick it right down but I kind of like it dancing on my bag okay but I don't think it's quite complete yet so let's use just a little bit more of the twine okay find the end here <laughs> and we'll just do just a little little bitty bow so you form your loop, go around, pull it through, tighten, and then you can adjust so that your loops are just how you want. Make it just a little bit bigger loops a little bit. Okay, and then trim the ends, and we'll adhere that to our pineapple. Got some mini glue dots here. All right, so the trick with the mini glue dots, I know they're hard to see, but for the most part, always stick your embellishment or your bow or whatever you're working with, stick it directly to the glue dot, make an impression, and then pull it off, okay? And then it's just how you need it, and it'll stick right there on your project. How cute is that? Okay, so don't don't pick the dots. Don't pick the boogies here off the roll. 
that's not that's not polite you want to press your embellishment to the dot and then and then pull it off and then your fingers are clear and your project looks good all right so that's our little little uh rattan look beach bag with the coastal wave folder and like i said i put you do a little baggie of um of little treats so i put um let me show you what these were i actually found these at big lots big lots is my store <laughs> i love that place uh, these are fresh finds fruit bites they are pineapple coconut and they it's actually like a um kind of like a fruit roll-up inside i did taste some i actually didn't care for the taste but they matched the theme really well um so if you kind of like that pureed fruit uh these were healthy let's see they have in them pineapple juice coconut dried apple apple juice dried pineapple all right so that's all that's in them um so pretty pretty healthy there so i paired a couple of those and then um paired those with the mamba fruit juice that are always in fun tropical flavors there and that makes a really cute cute little treat there and it fills up your bag just so yeah so you could also put little note cards in here this uh perfectly fits the three by three uh little square note cards but <laughs> yeah diana you like that yes you don't nobody wants boogie fingers so don't pick the dots <laughs> okay <laughs> that is that's my tip all right so there is our beach bag and of course we're going to the beach and we're we're doing it up nice we want to dress tropical too so I'm going to show you a couple of tips for doing uh, making a tropical shirt card so the cool thing with this is actually um, hidden little fold and when you open it then on the inside you can do an insert um, with a little message I think this would be really cute to oh I've got a bug a little stink bug um, it's that time of year they come in the house so <laughs> sorry about that distraction there uh, so it'd be cool to put a gift card in here and then see if whoever you send it to, if the recipient actually knows enough to open the card and find their gift. <laughs> I think that would that would be cute. So in this case, I used the Lily pattern from the Tropical Oasis uh, paper pack. But I want to give you a tip on doing it with a directional pattern. So in which case, these are the little, um, the little beach cars, the woody wagons here. And when you're doing them on a shirt, you wanna make sure that your cars are actually the proper side up. Hey, Donna, how are you? So I'm gonna give you some tips for, for not just making the shirt card, but for making it using a pattern um, that's directional. So the first thing we need to do, I'm gonna move my big shot out of the way. Okay, get my trimmer out. So this is a full size, um, standard card here with my code here. Um, so in the US, this will fit in a standard envelope uh, that's four and a quarter by five and a half. I actually had it in a um, one of my little clear envelopes, which is missing now. So this is designed, it's a full, just like a regular card front. Okay, so it's you can see. Uh, for reference the size here okay um, if you are uh, in Europe or Australia I believe it is uh, demonstrator Carolyn Benny she has a cute tutorial very similar um, and she gives the measurements um, in centimeters so this one is inches and it's going to fit in a standard um, card here that ends up being four and a quarter by five and a half Okay, so to do this, uh, you start out where you have your sheet of 12 by 12 uh, designer series paper here. You actually want to cut this in half, so we're going to cut it at the 6 inch mark, and then we're going to cut it, trim off the bottom um, at the 10 inch mark. So let me bring this in here. So first we're going to cut it at 6 inches, which if you have the new paper trimmer, this uh, lines right up. There's actually a guide bar when your um, when your arm is closed, right at the six inch mark. Okay, so you could actually do two cards from 
from a sheet of 12 by 12. But I am gonna open this, the guide bar here, get some things out of the way. All right, so then we're going to use it at the 10 inch mark and trim off the bottom. Okay, so you're left with a piece that's six by 10. I'm gonna close that up a little bit. And now we're going to do some scoring. So we are going to, it's six inches long. We're gonna score it into quarters. So that means we're gonna start at the one and a half inch mark. And when you're using a paper trimmer, you're actually working in reverse. So we're gonna slide this in here and go to one and a half. Make sure it's up against the, the guide straight, okay? So, and don't, don't feel like you have to push too hard with a new paper trimmer or if you're using the um, scoreboard. Uh, if you're using the scoreboard with designer series paper, make sure you use the, the bold, the big end of the stylus um, because designer series paper is not as thick as cardstock and you don't want to cut you don't want to press so hard that it actually tears your paper. So we started out at one and a half. We're going to slide it over to the three inch mark. This is actually our, our middle mark. And we're just doing this kind of light because that's going to be, it's going to mark where we fold the outer edges into, if that makes sense. Now we're going to go another inch and a half. So over to the three and a half inch mark, score it one more time. Okay, so we have, and then you're done with your, your trimmer. So let me show you if you can see it a little bit on the, the darker side. All right, so we can, you can kind of see that, that middle line. All right, so you could use eight and a half by 11 paper. Yes, you could. Um, you're gonna do the same measurements. You're mm -hmm. gonna cut your paper so that it's six inches wide across the top, and then that it's 10 inches long. So six inches wide by 10 inches long. All right, so your three inch mark in the middle uh, essentially just marks where you're going to fold those outer layers into. So we've got one score line, a second, and a third. The paper is divided into quarters. So if I, if I fold it like that, you can kind of see how we've got four sections. So we're gonna fold the outer sections into the middle. Go ahead and use your bone folder. And these should, meet if you scored your paper correctly let's see if i scored my paper correctly these should meet right up yes perfectly just paper to paper no gaps uh, right up the center okay so again that you're using um whatever pattern you want on the outside um so you're gonna fold that in okay all right so the tr trick with a dimensional um, pattern like this is you actually want to then, you're gonna work upside down because when you fold this finished, you wanna be able to see your trucks or your cars, whatever you wanna call these things. Um, you want them right side up, okay? So we are, we're working upside down here. Let me show you, you can see on this what we're, we're working with. It doesn't really matter when it's, um, when it's just flowers, but when it's, or if it's solid, it's something like this. Okay, so right now I have them folded in the middle. I've turned it so the trucks are upside down. I'm actually gonna flip it over. We're still upside down. And you're going to fold this top part down about a half an inch. This is going to make the collar of your shirt. And I, I just kind of eyeball this. Um, you wanna make sure your papers are even and go ahead and give it a nice, um, really burnish that with your bone folder because you've got several layers. You got one, two, three, four. You've got four layers of designer series paper there and you wanna make sure that that's a nice smooth fold, okay? Because this will eventually be our collar. Now you're going to flip it back over so that the open side is facing you. Your collar is, is flipped down towards your work surface. Now we're going to slide this up a little bit. Can you guys see that on the, 
the video. I think we're good. Yes, woody wagons. Okay, so I'm not, I didn't just make that up somewhere. That is an actual term. All right, so now we're gonna take, we've already folded that, that collar part. It's down towards the, the table. You're gonna take these corners here and you're not just gonna make it a, a right angle, but you wanna leave. This is gonna be the neck of the shirt. I'm kind of holding my finger there uh, because you wanna curve this in towards into the center. It should match up right at the center line here. There we go. But you want it to be kind of smooth, um, a little bit curved at the top. So can you guys see how I I did that? Again, kind of hold that with your finger. That's the that's the neck. And we're gonna curve this in. And it's you want to match them up. Okay, so hold that with your finger. Hold them in place. Go ahead and burnish that really well with your with your bone folder. This is this is the collar of your shirt. So you can kind of see now where how the the points of the collar those are actually going to hold your card um, closed. Okay, so everything is is nice and and flat. The points, everything is even. We came together in the center. Now I'm going to slide this up. And we're gonna fold out these bottom pieces to make our our arms. Okay, so you can see how on this one we've got this. So we need to fold out the flaps to make our sleeves. And again, I'm not gonna just I don't want it to be super wide. Remember, this does need to fit in an envelope, but I am just kind of eyeballing it there. Pulling that, I don't want it right to the corner. I don't want to tear my my corner. Okay, so, but I do want it, you can kind of see how much you want your sleeve to stick out. This is the distance it's sticking out from each side. Okay, so then mark that point, and they should be, yes, should be evenly Go ahead and use your, your bone folder on that again. Okay, so now we've got our collar at the top of the bag. Collar at the top and our sleeves at the bottom. This is the cool part. Now we're just going to take that right up. Yay, our, our, our wagons are facing the right direction. And slide that right underneath the collar points right up to the top. So you have this little score, light score line on the front should match right up with the score line there in the neck. Hold that at that point and now use your bone folder and go ahead and score score your card. Now your shirt is actually, you've completely folded your shirt. Now this is kind of cool, it depends. We've got the, the little wagons here, but um, I thought it was perfect if you didn't have buttons I love the um, the in color faceted dots. Uh, these are the 2019 to 2021 in color dots. So these are um, in the pretty peacock, the terracotta tile, the purple posy, seaside spray, and um, and the rococo rose. I'm like I'm missing one. Okay, so I think the the little um, pretty peacock dots work perfectly. And since Doris has me using my little Merp type purpose tool here, I'm gonna swap out the, the um, piercing end and just flip that around, lock it in, use my little spatula end. And I want just three, I use the medium size on here. I think I'm gonna use the small side here cause that's what I've got three of. Whoops, where did it go? over here on my table. Okay, and then you can put them right right where you want them. You've got that little score line, so go right up the, right up the center here. So you can space them out however you, however you want. I kind of like mine spaced a little bit. Okay, you just press them where you want them. All right, one more here. Again, I don't have the fingernails to, to do this, but I use your 
love, use your multi-purpose tool or even your paper snips and then just slide that right off of there and then they're perfectly positioned. All right, so I've got my, just give them a little baggie of embellishments there. So this is the front of our shirt. How cute is that? But if you want, you could add a secret little message down in here. So if you want to, this piece, um, you can see I matted it on a piece of a pretty peacock here. So this is two and three quarters by four and a quarter. So two and three quarters by four and a quarter. So let me cut, let me cut a little piece of pretty peacock cardstock. All right, looks like I need to open a new package of cardstock. I've been using a ton of this color. Okay, so I'm gonna just cut this down the four and a quarter mark here. Four and a quarter by two and three quarters. Okay, so that's the, the mat. So for our whisper white piece, uh, we need that just a little bit smaller. So that should be at two and a half by four is what we want that. So two and a half by four. Okay, so I've got two pieces here. And then I'm going to use my favorite stamp set, Timeless Tropical here, and stamp uh, Rest and Relax, You Deserve It. So this would be great if you wanted to um, maybe send a gift card to somebody going on vacation. Um, that would be fun for, you know, like honeymooners or something. Um, you could also use this um, perfect for like retirement or... Um, yeah, any kind of cool thing. Just somebody going on a trip. It'd be kind of fun to give them a cool little gift. All right, so let's use some um, of the Pretty Peacock ink here. This, I like it so that when they open the card, they can actually read the message. So that's why I'm going to face that out. I just mushed it just a little bit there. Move that so I don't stick my arms in it. Okay, now what did I do with my Okay, so I'm just use a little bit of snail here. Tape these together and then you can still write your message on here or um, use a couple glue dots or something and stick down a, a gift card. Again, it can be anything up to, you want it to be about two and three quarter inches because your whole card um, the shirt part here is three inches wide and then the sleeves stick out. So I'll just slide that right in there. It goes right up to the, the crease. How cool is that? And then we, again, you just tuck everything right underneath those collar points and that helps hold it all together. So whether you're using um, a floral, a bright floral pattern or a printed pattern, uh, the key is just if you're using a directional pattern, like one where things need to face in a particular direction, once you've got it folded in, uh, you work from reverse so that you then fold it up and look at the right side. I hope that makes sense. Um, definitely go back and rewind the video on replay if you'd like to, um, to catch those. Yes, so those are my couple of tropical cards, a little bit different take on it. Um, there are several videos out there, but I love these fun little Hawaiian shirt projects. And I thought they went perfectly with our little rattan beach tote here using the coastal weave embossing folder and our little pineapple tag from the Time for Tags um, stamp and reward set. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope you'll make some of these and um, and share your photos with me. I would love to see uh, the shirt cards that, that you come up with and the different uh, things that you use them for. But I think that would be fun. And, and we were laughing at, at the retreat day that, you know, to give this as a gift 
uh, with a gift card or you know you could even fold up and put some cash in there and see if <laughs> they know to open the card so they could find the cash or, or find the gift card in there that would be fun to watch you could do it would be a really cute um you know like a little graduation card or something like that so those are my projects thank you guys so much for watching please leave me your comments uh share your love and um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe on my YouTube channel. Um, two weeks ago, my video, I so appreciate it. You guys helped me get to over 400 likes on that video. And I actually gained 40 new YouTube subscribers. So welcome to all of you to my channel here. Um, my goal really is to get to 1,000 here um, by June. So if you can, if you're not already subscribed, I know sometimes that's a little tricky. Um, you just you hit that little subscribe button if you're already subscribed and you hit that it does unsubscribe you so if you're already subscribed that's great stay that way uh, share my you can share the videos you can copy the link and share that um, with your friends and family um, but if you're not subscribed please subscribe to my channel and help me out there and um, I will go ahead and uh, share these projects uh, on Pinterest and things as well so you can um, pin those from my boards, but thank you guys so so much um, Hope you enjoyed it and we will see you next week next Friday For session 36. I'll have to think of something fun to share with you then. All right, you guys have a wonderful Friday evening um, Have a wonderful weekend <laughs> Thanks so much. Alrighty. Bye. Bye